Good afternoon. My name is Alex Zaragoza, and I want to welcome you to the continuation of the public uh, lecture series done in conjunction with the Berkeley Art Museum Pacific Film Archive and the Art and Design Program of the University of California at Berkeley. I want to express uh, our gratitude uh, to all of the people involved in this effort, uh, particularly to the leadership of Shannon Jackson, the Vice Chancellor, uh, and particularly the donors to Banff that have made this lecture series possible, as well as the donors to the art and design program uh, of the Berkeley campus. I want to welcome all of you, particularly those of you who are not members of the class. Very uh, happy to see so many non-students, uh, as much as I love my students, uh, in the audience. So with no further ado, uh, our guest today is Roilan Lobato. Uh, we'll talk about his life history, if you will, uh, subsequently in the program. Suffice to say that he is a choreographer, dancer, uh, is part of a dance troupe, uh, and has been, in this respect, uh, a, a real leader here in the, in the Bay Area, uh, in the Oakland uh, side of the Bay in particular. Uh, his uh, prowess as a dancer, talent as a dancer, his ability to teach uh, Cuban dance, uh, et cetera, has been a real boon for the Bay Area in general. And I can vouch for that because in teaching my course on Cuba, uh, I invariably uh, invite uh, Roydan Lovato to my class. And it's a real highlight uh, for the students to have him uh, in my class uh, on those sessions where we discuss the connection between Cuban history and Cuba's music and dance. So uh, please join me in welcoming Roiland Lobato. He will uh, begin by uh, discussing three different dance genres. Uh, we have found a very brave volunteer to help him uh, demonstrate uh, these three dances, uh, and um, unfortunately, given the nature of the of the terrain here, of the classroom, and so on, uh, you will be spared the opportunity to stand up and dance along with him, which he does in my classrooms, where we have a flat surface. But feel free to stand up and try if you like. Please join me then, Roland Lovato. Hi. Hello, everyone. Um, this is really impressed to be here because I don't think I have the big career to talk in front of everyone, but I would I would say thank you for the opportunity to be here. Like um let's just start to dancing first. I will I will we're talking about like Afro Cuban dance, like the name is Rumba. Rumba is a is a dance, have a three different style or or type of dance. I first is like we call Jambu. The second one is Wawanko, is the most popular in Cuba. And the third one is like Colombia. It's really close to Colombia country, but it's Colombia. And that born and Jambu is like it's like it's a, a slow dance. It's like all people like um dancing and the same time it's like a it's a joke when they dancing, right? Like they represent like how at the same time they they may love or they haven't loved, right? They are in love. Like it's really sensual. Is the the big part is like the woman, and women represent the sensuality of the dance. That all that I would say like all that kind of dance can have a really big influence from Africa and Spain. Both of type of dance have an influence. What I say again is from Spain, from the the flamenco. Thank you, flamenco, and Cuba. It's coming from Africa with the drums, and they mix together and they born in matanzas. Now you can see matanzas. Area 
all this area and Havana. All the two areas, the Rumba, born because they have a really big influence on the port, for worker in the port. They have a like, and we have a solar, solar. It's, a, it's, it's like a small towns. Everybody have the same backyard. And the party is like, um, everybody and the, at some point start to dance together. And what's happening, like people with Spain influence mix with the African influence and they created a rumba. Rumba is mean party, right? Everybody say, let's go to the rumba and let's go, it's like they say, let's go to the party. And they start to play and having fun and drinking and dancing, right? Now, she will help me to demonstrate a little bit the Wawanko, all right? Let's do it. All right, before the music start, I would say like rumba in general, like the three types of dance, have it, the music have two, two division. It's like the first one is introduction part, is when there's the singer talking, counting about histories, about what happened in the neighborhood, what happening in, when, in the regular life. Second part is like when we call Montuno, and when the music start to get moving fast, is when the dancer start to move, right? Is ready? That, the same music have the influence in almost all the Cuban music history. Like son have introducing introducing music, then son have introducing music and montuno. And this is when the dancer start to dance. Like the after the salsa we call casino, we don't call it salsa. And the same thing, have introduction part and montuno. But in that kind of dance, we dance in the whole song. Just our best move, we're moving in the montuno part, right? I will try to give you the samples to all that kind of, you will see the difference when it's the montuno and when it's introduction. The music goes slow, we're dancing slow. If the music is moving fast, we're going fast, right? Everybody know the Cuban clave? Can we do it before the music? Let's do it. Cuban clave? Everybody knows? No, ¿Sabes? Okay. This is different. This is the what the, the rumba clave. Rumba clave is two three. Y pa 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 u pa pa. But the Cuban clave is like three two. It's like pa 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 pa. Right? Let's dance it first. I prefer dancing than talk, for sure.
pero ya que estoy aquí, y veo que quieren ustedes saber quién soy yo, no pierdan tiempo, suban al cielo, y cuando le abran la puerta, y entonces vean a San Pedro, él dirá que yo soy la llave, rumbero la llave, la rumba. Conmigo sí, conmigo vale todo, conmigo vale todo, conmigo vale todo otra vez. Conmigo sí, conmigo vale todo, vale todo, conmigo vale todo, conmigo vale todo. Conmigo sí, conmigo vale todo, conmigo vale todo, conmigo vale todo otra vez. Conmigo sí, conmigo vale todo. Do you see, like, it's like no competition, no competition. It's no competition, but like we dancing together, like women all the time moving hips, right? And shoulder and say like, if you wanna dance with me or you wanna go out with me, you have to work hard, right? It's like, Thin. I mean, say, okay, I'm really handsome with my shoulder, and we have the bakunao, right? Bakunao is the strong move the guy make. Boom, it's like a game, like rooster and chicken. Like, he made the bakunao, and a woman has to block that move, right? You say, hey, no. But you just keep being, don't lose you. Your position, your, your, your sensuality. No, it's sexuality, it's sensuality, right? It's different. Like you block and you say, hey, try again, right? No, that way. And you start to dancing in different positions, right? This is Afro Cuban, or again, you have three drums. Um, the, 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 big, the big drum is like, um, we call matador, like, o tumbador. And the second one is tres dos. And the, the small one is the quinto. And this is when they made the improvisation. With dancing, they have to make, they have to play our step. If I do this, the drum has to follow me. If I move my shoulder, he has to try to make my own move. It's like a competition between me and the, and the drum quinto, all right? The second dance we try to do is like um, son, son cubano. Okay, son cubano born in Santiago. Well, uh, let me get out of here. Okay. Well, I, I won't say Santiago, I will say Oriente, because it's really, it's really tricky to say like a, just a specific city because you will see on the map, like before the son Montuno came, in this city, in Baracoa, in this area, Guantanamo, where I am from, we had the Changui. Maybe you hear somebody hear that, that, that name before. Changui is a music, it's really country music, like Jape de Huiro, Tres, and Marimbola. This is like the, maybe probably the roots of son. And in Baracoa, we have a Nengon. Nengon is also other type of dance. Um, I think before the before the sun. And in all this area, Santiago, Palma, Mayari, all this area, Oriente, I would say, this, the sun Montuno born. And 
The son Montuno, we call son Montuno because we have a other son move to Havana. And Havana is the capital. And in Havana, one really important um, artist, Cuban artist, uh, his last name is Matamoros. He started to introduce other type of, of instruments and other other sounds different than Montuno here. They say because we call Montuno, and some people say it's Urbano because it's the big city, uh, it's the capital, right? Um, but I want in Santiago. The other difference is the way we dancing. The way we dancing in Santiago is a little different than Havana, even though it's syncopado, the tempo. We dance in syncopado, side to side, but we have here in this area more movement in our shoulder and in our hips. Here is more, more the same tempo on the foot and hips, but doesn't have too, mo too much shoulder move, right? I will try to show you how we dance in sun. Some born, I think, around the, last cent the beginning of the last century, um yeah um, it's really important music um, in cuba because have a really influence to the rest of all our popular music this is this is our popular music well i had to say before like in matanzas they we've born the danzón danzón was before the song even and it's a influence to the to the song cubano but but uh, like, it's really, it's really a lot because this is a small island, but at the same time we have a lot of music for different size. You see uh, the Havana, Havana Matanza, we have uh, the Yoruba people. Yoruba came from Nigeria, from Africa, Congo, and they living in this area, and we have influence for this area. In the in the in Guantanamo, Santiago, in Oriente, we have an influence from Haiti and from Jamaica and all the small island around. And this is because Cuba is so musical, I would say, because we have an influence from everywhere. And before the in the in the last in the beginning of the last century, we have a lot of immigration for the rest of the world, like Chinese, England. Like, and everybody came with the culture, with the music. And we take a little pieces of everyone and create our, our own identity. You know what I mean? But let, let's go back to the song. <coughs> Sorry. Like, let's do it. Let's do it with the song demonstration. My partner is ready. Me ha trabajado con todos los muertos para virarme el mundo al revés. No hay un cabildo ni un baile santo y nunca falta ningún bebé. Porque ella vive siempre pensando que mi cabeza baje a los pies. Me daba polvo de sapo porque con él me echaban los pies y hasta ponía en mi cabecera un vaso de agua con vetibe. Say. 
That's right. This is song you see the different shoulders, hips, and just more clothes, right? This is song this get a lot of evolution. Uh, the song after song coming in different ways like mambo, cha cha cha. Um, I start to mix even the song with song cha, song mambo, song guaracha. It's a lot of different types, right? Um, it start to be like like in Cuba, it's really important the relationship with the musician or music with the dancer. Always dancer in Cuba push to the to the musician to the next level. I can give you a sample. Dance on was really like so in, they we call it un solo ladrillito, dancing in small space, it's just here, suavecito, suavecito, right? We dancing here. Da, 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 da. What's happening? After that, after a while, we get tighter and say, oh, come on, we have to move. We have a little space. We have to dance. They, they created the danzonete. Danzonete, when you dance and you move more, right? The same thing happened with the song. You see, that's, that song is more, more to the, in this time. But the song was really slow, moving hips, like a few a few movements, like guy had to go down and be like this and dance, and we have a, a lot of, we call it tornillo, right? Um, to these days, right? Everybody here like salsa, like born in New York, thing like that, I won't fight about that. Yeah, but my, my, my grandparents dancing the music like everybody called salsa and the 50s and the 40s, right? And my mom danced the salsa, like everybody knows salsa and the 60, beginning of 60, right? And it's, what's happening is a little, it's a little political, I, I don't expert about political, but in the, the 59 when Fidel get the power, Fidel Castro get the power, all the Cuban bands can travel to US. Before that, you find every Cuban dance band in New York and Broadway and everywhere in New York and United States to play Cuban music. After that time, Cuban, Cuban bands, Cuban musicians was closed. No more dance, no more music, no more not, nothing outside of Cuba. And a lot of people are thinking like, oh, the music and dance and everything in Cuba disappeared because it's a, it's a Communism is a lot of things like that. Nobody hear nothing about Cuba. Even in, in these days, it's really hard to know what's happening inside of Cuba. Um, but no, it was true. Like we are still play music and do a lot of things. What happening was like um, uh, all that music we have, even though the Afro-Cuban music came from Africa, we they the government or I don't know who was the idea. I start to we start to have it in the school, and everything was a program to try the idea of to conserve, to keep the tradition in, with with don't lose all that the tradition we have Afro Cuban music, dance, and different type of music, and we get evolution. Now all the all the musicians start to get more. I think better, I would say better, like better, they dominate the instruments. They don't play song on the school. They 
learn to dominate the piano or the bass or things like that. And they start to create a new, new sounds, new things. But again, and the 60 uh, start to, in Cuba, start to be all the type of, we call casinos. Casino is when, when before the revolution, all the casinos being played, they've been for play, money, thing like that. I don't see that. I'm a little more, more close than that. Um, and everybody say, oh, let's go to the casino to dance because that that type of casinos start to be like a social club, social club for young young people that start to dance in. Um, and that we start to call casino like almost everybody know around the world for salsa. We have a really good bands in that time, I would say like Peyo El African, La Cha, um, pff, so many, I forget. But you can find on the 60 a lot of, a lot of Cuban bands. The 70s we have evolution. And the 80s, like it started to come in Bam Bam, or the really popular orchestra, Pacho Alonso in the 60s. Um, what happening in the 90s? In the 90s, the social, social, all the, you, the La Union Soviética, Russia, disappear, right? You see the chant and the 90s. And Cuba be alone with no, with no help, no nothing. Um, we start to be in the crisis, really big crisis. This is like, this, we call it special periodo, periodo especial. And we don't have almost nothing, nothing. I be there. It was really hard time in the nineties, but the government started to open to the tourists. A lot of tourist people come to Cuba. Um, what happening was like all our bands in that time, like Manolito, Simonello, Bamban, Manolín, El Medico de la Salsa. They start to create a new rhythms, a new rhythms, like with all the Cuban influence, like. Afro-Cuban drums inside, um, jazz inside, a lot of music. What happened? We, the, the my generation, the '90s, we start to go to that concert to dance, to sweating because we have a lot of problem in our house, and we don't want to hear like songs at that time, like. Oh, like about love, talking about love, because we are in really hard situation. We wanna just go to dance and sweating. And we push our musician to create a new, more, new rhythm and new sounds and more aggressive. People say aggressive, but it's more syncopated. You can find a lot of things inside of the timba music because it's like Afro-Cuban, with. Afro-Cuban drums inside when they have it like really strong sounds and the tumbao with the piano. Like it's almost the song, it's the same style of dance of the song. The difference is like we don't dancing like syncopado, right? Pa, 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 ah, pa, 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 ah, right? We start between the tempo. People can see it's, it's out of tempo. No, we are on tempo. Just is syncopado, right? Now the timba we dancing in tempo. E pa 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 pa. Right? With the first tempo we are start to dance. Right? But what's happening is with the music is like they play both clave. They play the they play Cuban clave, like the pa 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 and rumba clave. They switch on the same music. Pa, 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 right? And we have to, dancer, we start to be dancing both different style on the same timba. And the timba I dance with my partner, at some point I let it go and I start to dance in rumba, where I can dance afro, make a turn, and go back to my with my partner to dance timba, right? I will try to make a little demo about that. Can you help me again? Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> Uh. 
Give it up for her, please. My gosh. Yeah, it's the good thing about Cuban dance. It's like you don't need to you don't need to know the partner or the person for dance. If you have the rhythms, you can dance. Right? We never danced before. This is our first time dancing. Right? Good, right? Yeah. Because what you need is like this is the, this type of dance is like on the street. This is like for social, for have fun. You don't have to go to like a school to learn to dance also. This is like, I don't know, maybe in the air, everybody dancing there. Oh no, no everybody. This is a mistake. Every Cuban dance is not really true. But but again, like the difference is like it's really it's really always on tempo with the music. It's like and one, 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 this is your tempo. Right, every move you make is in the ten in that tempo. You don't have to. Everybody can dance. I can dance with my my knees, and I can dance with my grandma. You don't necessarily have to practice or have like go to academy for dance because it's on the street. And you see a lot of influence like the the, the this music was like um, Habana de Primera. I think it's one of the best Cuban bands right now, and. And you see a lot of influence. You hear like a lot of jazz influence, right? With the with the trump with the trumpet, but at the same time, the bass of that music is really deep. Is the Afro-Cuban drums inside? They have like congas, they have like pailas and and drum set, right? And the tumbao is always keep it with the with the piano, right? I know it's it's so crazy to talk for me about Cuban music because. At some point, you have to find, you have to 
if you walk this way, at some point you find all the direction. It's really hard because it's really mixed. But the idea I wanna I wanna you get today is like Cuban music is like evolution from the beginning to with a lot of Cuban Afro Cuban influence, Spain influence, all the 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 good the every immigration came to Cuba and put some a little piece of the in our culture. Like we have a like a really important person in Cuba say with Cuban is like un ajiaco musical. It's a ajiaco is like a soup with other ingredients for different places. And we are a ajiaco, like we have it from everywhere. Right, I don't know but if we, yeah. Oh my gosh, now we're coming the more hard part. <laughs> he's he's much more comfortable dancing than he is yeah, talking about himself. So yeah, uh, you'll have to encourage me to or encourage him uh, to tell us a little bit uh, about his uh, journey. But I'm going to start by um, maybe ask, asking you, Roiland, if you could tell us a little bit about where you came from in Cuba, your family, what part of Cuba. Uh, because as you mentioned, the regions are very distinct. Oriente is one thing, which I consider kind of like the cradle mm -hmm. of Afro-Cuban music. Havana, because of its economic importance for 400 years in the Spanish colonial system, <laughs> was the other end of the island. The population was different because mm -hmm. most of the Españoles, the Spaniards, mm -hmm. that's where they were concentrated mm -hmm. as opposed to other parts uh, of Cuba. So. Can you tell us a little bit about your upbringing? What was yeah. it like living in Guantanamo <laughs> in those days? You're you're very young, no, but, and yeah, uh, but really you were born it. during that uh, very terrible time. You grew up as a young man yeah. uh, in that period of time where the Soviet Union, which had been the economic pillar of the island in many respects, uh, collapsed and left the island in a very bad economic situation. Can mm -hmm. you tell us a little bit about? Your upbringing, what was it like yeah. to live in, in the campo there in Guantanamo? Yeah, I was born so in Guantanamo, and not the U.S., of course, in the other side. <laughs> like uh, Guantanamo City, it's like, um, it's Guantanamo right here. All this area is Guantanamo, right? We call it Guantanamo, but the city, is, is this is Guantanamo. I born there in 1974. Um, yeah, like my neighborhood was really cultural neighborhood. I have uh, like on my corner like uh, comparsa, the Negrofino, three three blocks. I have other comparsa, uh, bobitos. I have uh, the next block. I have uh, other comparsa like music, Aram, like but Afro Cuban music. Mm -hmm. Like was was uh, I know I've been happy born there <laughs> i don't know but my my family i my mom and my dad still living there uh, my grandma my my rest of the family i live there born we are three three brother four brother and one sister mm -hmm. uh, i am the oldest of course like um was really difficult but was in the 80s was easy life i think i would say that we don't have, we don't think in too much and, oh, I don't think in too much. I will talk personal my experience because every Cuban can have different experience. Sure. Like, depend what, what perception you have of the life, what you perceive in the life. Um, for me, burning in my house, like with my mom, with my family, a really tight family, mm -hmm. supporting each other, like, was, was really good, I think. Um, in the 80s was simple life, we go to school, dancing, play on the street, um, have a friend, having friends, um, dancing, 
on the street, again, like, I think, normal life. And the night, it was the most difficult part, like you say, like, so being in a living alone or disappear, I don't know what can I say about that, like we start to live in the really special period. And this is when our dreams start to coming down. My dream started to coming down a little bit because in 1990, I have 16 years old. Um, this is when you start to dreaming like, okay, I will go to college, I will have this career, I will study, I will, I don't know, marry, I have a, two kids, simple life, like, like I, what I saw in my mom and my dad. But the economy was so hard, and all our dreams, my dreams, and a few friends around me dreams was fall. I say like, okay, wow, we are still keep keep us. I I still studied at the university in Cuba in Guantanamo, and dancing do my and that part never stop to never stop to dancing and. Um, and study and the and college like was it's true it was really hard we don't have a we don't have enough no food enough um nothing because it was totally nothing yes i remember when i visited the first time there were blackouts yeah throughout 20 the 20 hours it, yeah 20 hours without electricity yeah. like more than one year right. living like that like yeah. was really um in that period of like a lot of friends of mine take a boat and jump into the water and try to, but mm -hmm. they started coming in to U.S. to follow a dream. Could um, you tell us something about, um, at a certain point, you decided to make dance an important part of your professional yeah. life. Could you tell us something about your schooling in that period of time where you were, mm -hmm. you were uh, being... Uh, trained to be a teacher, and mm -hmm. in your case, particularly when it came yeah, to music, like dance, and so on. When I decided to be a dancer, it was like, I think it was an accident, because I, I born with music and dance, and on my, on my entire life, and I never expect to be a dancer. Always, I make a joke mm -hmm. to my friends when they dancing. I say like, bah. they came, they, oh, I'm tired. I said, what are you tired? This is nothing, right? Um. At some point on the school and dancing my entire life, but never being in, in the dance company or the mm -hmm. dance group until I have 14 years old. When I saw in my in my school, like a dance company, mm -hmm. like Amateo score, we just as, we are just as students. Um, I saw that and something came to me inside. I said like, oh, okay, wow, this is different. I want to try. It. Um, one day they call me because they know I uh, I dancing and I make all the time joke about about that. Oh, we need you here. I say like, okay. Let's let's work. Let's so let's you're try. About 14, 15 14, years. 14. Mm -hmm. And I start to dancing with with fourteen years old in that group. And never stop. Mm -hmm. It's something like catch me and yeah, actually. So this you continued from there. You, in a sense, you're already yes. becoming a professional yes. dancer. Yes. Um, and yeah. the, been dancing for with that company for three years. After I jumped to and college and the other company, and I start to have training. It's really, it's really, in Cuba. Like uh, my experience was like, even though you are no professional dancer at that at that point, but the level. The practice, the the, the, the the is really high. It's really high level. You can't pretend to be a, a dancer and get, because it's a lot of competition. It's a lot of thing, and you have to develop really fast. Right. I think a lot of people that. don't know that in Cuba, uh, to join a group along the lines that Royland has mentioned, it's very competitive. And there are auditions and so on, and a very few get to continue. Yeah. And in your case, you were yeah. able to very lucky to win that that competition. So yes. it says a lot about your your ability in that sense. Yeah, it was like um, yeah, I would say lucky because I saw a lot of friends of mine like with good talent, but they don't have like the energy to keep doing that because it's really sacrifice work and position. It's you. You have to train in your body every single day. Um, remember, like when it's summer, summer camp, 
but we have a festival in September, we don't, we never stop. We say that our director say, no, you, summer, July, August, it's really hot and humid mm -hmm. in Cuba, and we are still training mm -hmm. at that time. Um, in, I've been dancing for that period, like amateur, and amateur, but it's like amateur, because it was really training. Like it was four hours a day, like after classes, uh -huh. like um, taking ballet classes, taking modern dance classes. When I decided to be a professional dancer, I moved to Havana mm -hmm. for better opportunities and mm -hmm. um, more or less. How old were you when you moved to Havana? Twenty-three. Twenty-three years old. Yeah, um, I started to dancing with uh, La Compañía de Narciso Medina. It's a modern dance, mm -hmm. but no like in his company, in his academy. He, they they have an academic and mm -hmm. get some training for modern dance. Like a dance institute. Yeah. yeah, because my background was more Afro. Uh -huh. And when and I started to dancing in Isaías Rojas' company, Ban Ra Ra, is one of the most famous. Uh, prestigious. Right? Yeah, prestigious. Yeah. Um, yeah dance company in Cuba right now but just with Afro Cuban dance don't be enough mm -hmm. don't be enough I have to get more training a modern dance um, ballet classes and Narciso Medina provide all that type of classes like I'm doing both mm -hmm. company academy and company and um, with Banrara I've been like two two years two years dancing with Van Ra and after we decide, we I say we decide because of a few friends, we decide to create our own company mm -hmm. in 1999. With and what was the name of that company? Siete Potencia. Siete Potencia. Yeah. Um, I've been like, but at the same time, I started to study in the school mm -hmm. and be a pro dancer at the night time. Yeah. My day, my day was like, Leaving house at around eight o'clock, I return my house every day at two a.m. Yeah. Like, yeah, because it's like dance classes. I being a student in the morning, be a teacher in the afternoon because I being a director and choreographer of my company, and performing at night time, and go home. I be have a big backpack like your student have right now, big in the dad with a lot of clothes. Sounds like the life of a lot of my undergraduates. <laughs> uh, 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 one more question along those lines. Mm. Tell us something about the performance that that you were in, where you performed. Yeah, well, I've been performing like um, the most important theater in Cuba, like uh, Teatro Nacional, Teatro Mella, mm -hmm. um, Teatro Las Americas. Um, it's a, this is in Havana, um, festival and de... You travel to the island. Yeah. <coughs> And Matanzas Teatro Sauto, uh, Villa Clara Teatro La Caridad, and Festivales del, del Ciof, mm -hmm. um, que es, es a festival for international folkloric. It's really hard to remember all that, but yeah. it's folklore international dance. And the Huemilere is the one of the most important festival in Cuba and in Guanabacoa. Mm -hmm. and 1991, I'm with 17 years old, I traveling to the Pirineo Festival in, in France. Mm -hmm. That was a tour in France, uh, Belgium, and, and Spain for so two you got months. So you got to perform outside, outside, of, uh, yeah. outside of the island mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. okay. 1991. Well, then. <laughs> to here. Then, then how did you get to the United States? Well, uh, tell us a little bit about yeah. making that jump from the sure. island to the U.S. Short history, like, it's like, I've been a director and career for my company, Siete Potencias, but we, every dance group working in, every dance group working for the government comp uh, mm -hmm. network, I would say. Right. Inside of that network, they created, like, a, a big group of best dancer and musician to, to represent Cuba and Mexico. Um, we traveling to Mexico and Cancun in 2005 for a performance over there um, to have a, a tour. After after the tour, um, 
I get a contract for for a stay more time. Mm -hmm. But this is the truth. It's my it's my reality. Like the when we traveling, each company have a re, like representative, mm -hmm. government right. representative, a, a government representative official yeah. that goes yes. with the dance group. Exactly. Yeah. And he don't he doesn't want to f sign in my time there. Right. Give you permission. To my stay permission. Longer. Yeah, permission for a stay more time. That was a little frustration for me, and I decided to stay by myself. Um, after a week, but I didn't know this 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 man came inside of my room and took my passport. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> yeah, and I let me let me along in Mexico without 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 a passport. Without a passport. Um, in, in, I have a lot of friends. The good thing is like I have a good friends um, in Oakland, uh -huh. a dancer with me for many, many years in, in, with my, in my company, and they decide, they told me like, why you don't come to US? Never was my idea, for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I said, okay, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Being really scary, I remember when the plane landing in Oakland, I said, oh my gosh. That is no good decision, but I'm really happy to to come to the Bay Area and mm -hmm. Oakland because it's it's amazing, amazing, amazing place to to be a dancer or be an artist. Getting here, the adjustment to living here in the United States, did it help to have friends already here? Absolutely, and they helped you Absolutely. in a sense. Create yeah. a, a space for dancing and so Absolutely. on. Could you tell us a little bit yeah. about that? Well, but what's really the what's really hard because I came here without English, mm -hmm. uh, nothing. If you ask me my name, I would say like what <laughs> or okay. I didn't I didn't know nothing. And to have a friend here or a small a, a community friends is was amazing because even though the, I would say like you know what I won't dancing anymore. My career, my dance career stopped. Because how will do it here? And they told me, like, don't worry, this is a good place. Let's find studios, let's find opportunities. And I think that the, 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 the way they helped me like that was, was unbelievable because it was way easier. I don't know if, I don't, I don't think I would make, I, I make a, if they don't pick me at all. Because it's really open area. But you need to know exactly what door you touch when you doesn't know. And you come in with a country with other system. You know what I mean? Like we don't Cuba and US is way different system. Mm -hmm. Like in Cuba right now, not everybody has cell phone. You go to your home to your friend, touch the door mm -hmm. and they open. Are you here? Yeah, you are welcome. Here you have to make appointment. All that kind of like kind of thing like that is for somebody who came from Cuba. It's really, it's really hard yeah. because we don't know how it work like that. Mm -hmm. I remember my first days here. I get out, open the door, of the house, and don't see nobody walking on the street. Mm -hmm. Say like, what is everybody here? <laughs> <laughs> I saw the cars and. We say like, but that car somebody has to be driving or something. I want to talk with somebody. In Cuba, no. In Cuba, it's like in the street, everybody, everybody life, in everybody's country. out. Yeah. You know, it's a small sample. You can see like it's really hard for somebody come here without support, without friends. It's like um, they help me absolutely. They help me like they try to introduce me and in the, in the I would say Cuban community, but because Cuban Cuban community is really small in the Bay Area, mm -hmm. but we are really Thai friends, and everybody knows each other and try everybody to help. help yeah, help absolutely. Uh, like, oh, we have a time here. You want to teach my class and and teach my class, and everybody know you, uh, and you start to create your own, your own way and your own space. Yeah. Before I open it up for uh, comments or questions. Can you tell us a little bit about where you are now in terms of your, I, I understand you, you have a dance studio and yeah. you work with the Oakland School District well, and so on. Can you tell yes, us? I'm working. I have parents over there a lot, <laughs> like <laughs> for the school I work. Well, right now I'm working in EBI, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. It's the International Bilingual School. Mm -hmm. Nothing close to, to dancer, to dancing. I, I put music in the classroom. I can't. <laughs> I have to put it because they need, I think, I believe the kid need to be in touch with music and with art. Mm -hmm. This is the way I grow up. And I, I believe in that. And I'm working in, with kindergarten. Mm -hmm. I am assistant teacher. And the, I have a liaise. I'm working in Malonga Center. Malonga Center is in Oakland, in Alice Street and 14. I have it right now two classes there, mm -hmm. Tuesday night and Sundays. Um, Tuesday at 6, 30 p.m. Afro-Cuban dance and Sunday 11 and a half rumba. Mm -hmm. This amazing class, like with live music, with drummer, all Cuban drummer coming and play with the music, with music and dancing. It's like more a class, more than class. It's a party. Mm -hmm. It's a party, and everybody came to. It's a rumba. It's a rumba <laughs> to celebrate, to to be on touch with the with the Cuban culture, and we continue doing that. I've been traveling some time to. I came two weeks ago from LA, from um, working in the museum, uh, the show over there, and I traveling to Hawaii, working. Hawaii University doing some special workshop over there. So New York. To Hawaii, you come to Berkeley to Yeah, teach Berkeley. My class. You always invite me yeah, all the yeah. time every year. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Like in general I've been I think I've never started my career. I've been really doing really good. I'm traveling the fest dance festival San Diego, Los Angeles, uh, Cancun, um, New York, different yeah. places. Oregon. Yeah. I forget. And uh, tonight you're going back to Cuba. I going back to Cuba. Yeah, I going back. No, for, no, for the reason I would like to go. Mm -hmm. But one of the most, one of the my best friend is dying. Mm -hmm. yeah. Familia. Yeah. Is there friends are still there? Yeah. And so on, right? yeah. Right. yeah. He's he have a have a cancer and. That's it. Yeah. I, I think I have to go and say goodbye because he represents a lot in my life. Muy Cubano. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll open it up to q and A. I I don't know how many of you would like to ask a question uh, to Royland about growing up in Cuba or making the adjustment coming to the United States or the history of Cuban dance. Um, He's very knowledgeable about a lot of different things, so feel free to ask questions uh, of Royland. Got a couple of hands. Hi, my name is Allison, um, and I was just wondering, like, what kind of dance you got into in the very beginning, and if you could talk a little bit more about how you first started dancing. Well, the beginning of my my when I started to dancing was like popular music, like song, rumba, what if everybody learned Afro Cuban dance, what every almost everybody's exposed to dancing in Cuba in the street. Nothing academic, nothing like ballet, nothing like that. It's more for have fun, for parties like I I I don't I don't remember what, when was my first time to dance. I think dancing from three or four years. I started to dance with four years old, I think. Um, the, the, the influence is so many because, like, in Cuba, the first thing people do when they, they wake up is put the radio. The radio is like, boom, music, or they put the speaker we are exposed in all the time and different type of music. And um, of course, dance, music and dancing, they come in together. And I started to dancing with, I saw all these friends in my neighborhood dancing and just learned to see what they're doing. Um, I think I would say my career started for, when I have 14 years old, when I've been at the, when, at the, in the group, at the com dance company, when I start to get discipline, training, uh, warm up, thing like that. I, I don't know if I respond to your question, but thank you. 
Hi, um, my name is Natalie, and I was just wondering, well, first, what's the name of your dance company? And the if you first want... of that, I'll play the, my own company. Of your, like here in here? Oakland. Well, here, I, we don't have a company. It's really hard to have a dance company here. I guess, what are you involved with here? But I'm more independent. Independent. Yeah, I have a dance classes. Um, sometimes people call me from different teams and just going and join okay. with other companies. I don't have a company. I think my what I came from, I don't I don't have the I we came from with discipline, like training every single day, like you know, and here it's really I think it's impossible to have that. Everybody have different schedule to find a schedule for everyone. And living with the dance inside the dance company, I think it's really hard. And my other question was before you were 14 and kind of like went down that dance route, mm -hmm. was there anything else that you thought you'd be dedicating your life to? And if so, what, what, what did you think you would be doing now? Before, I think I'd be, I would, I would say a teacher, maybe. Teacher? I can't remember. I'm old. I'm 44. I sad to remember that. But before be a dancer, I've been in the process to create my own personality. I really have a different thing I would like to do, but nothing specific. Until when I start to dance in that company, to mm, everything changing in my life after that, because it was like. I can't remember the day. Like I saw twenty dancer dancing and the floor so sweating, everybody happy, and I said, "Like wow, okay, I wanna do that. <laughs> I think I I'm ready for doing it." And even though I I saw that, I said, like, "I wanna do it." I take it my time. I said, "Like okay," but I said, "Like they have to call me." No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> they call me and I start to join the group. But before I think. I don't remember. I think the best thing happening in my life was a, a be a dancer. For absolutely, I won't change it. Hi, um, my name is Pedro. Hi, Pedro. And um, muchísimas gracias. That's good. And uh, I'm sorry about your friend. Oh, thank you. And I just want to ask you. I'm from Santo Domingo. I'd like to ask you if you, what influences you detect and. In, from Santo Domingo, you have the Ajiaco, we have the Sancocho. So uh, what are the musical influences from some like, you know, Well, like, in Cuba, in, in the east part of Cuba, like we have the Perico Ripiao. Yeah, it's it's really, I would say like, it's really close with, with in more in, in the east part of Cuba, in Guantanamo, Santiago, because it's coming from, it's close. El Merengue, for sure, absolutely, because we have a like, no merengue exactly, but like we have a lot of influence for that way and that and that's like Perico Ripiao. Maybe uh, nobody is really, but no bachata, no no bachata, but more like merengue and Perico Ripiao. I would say this is the influence from Dominican Republic. Gracias. Hi, my name is Jessica. Hi, Jessica. Hi, my name is Vimothy, and I was wondering if when you travel. Did you try other dancing styles, and which one was your favorite? Oh yeah, I try. <laughs> I try, but uh, I would say for me, when I came here, like Haiti, me dancing for me is unbelievable. Like dancing like Haiti, I saw many dan Guinea dance, like from West West West, West African, African dance is it's amazing. Like for sure, I like all the different type of dance because I believe like if you da dancing is movement if you can move I would say all with my students you can move you can dance for sure because everybody walk with coordination nobody walk like whatever you know what I mean like if you have that kind of coordination you can dance and to see different type of dance take an influence like and my generation is like the the fusion generation because we have the timba, timba have 
Afro Cuban Afro Cuban dance, rumba, some hip hop. We can put it whatever inside. You know what I mean? And to come here to the Bay Area, this is one of the amazing things happened because here I always say I don't have to travel around outside the Bay Area to see whatever type of dance I wanna see. And it's it's amazing. But I would say for sure uh, West African classes and Haiti and Guinea oh, because this is my background too. Hello, my name is Joseph. Sorry about your uh, friend in Cuba. I hope you have a safe trip. Could you tell um, us about the history of salsa, bachata, and zouk? I don't know if you've heard of the last one. Well, I really don't know about... I, I, I can't talk about bachata because bachata is more Dominican Republic. Um, I really don't don't know too much about that. I don't, I don't like to say something I really, I don't, I don't, this is not my experience, right? Like, and so too is from Africa. We have a, a lot of, we, we in Cuba, we, we know, we know all that music because I'm in Isla de la Juventud, what is it, you see? Yeah, wait, no, no. Creo que lo está acá. Aquí lo tengo. Oh, okay. This is a small island, Isla de la Juventud. Cuba created like a, a lot of schools for African students. And every immigration came in with the music. And they start traveling, even in Santiago, they have like uh, African students. And Guantanamo too, I remember, hear that music when I was really young with African, African, the John students like came in with that music, but no more than that. I don't, I, I hear music, I saw how they dance. I can dance a little bit about that, but to know exactly, no. I really don't know. Like, I chat, I'm sorry. Like, gracias. Any other questions? Hi, my name is Imran. Uh, I just wanted to know, do you know if music in the U.S. that's influenced by Cuban music is popular back in Cuba? Yeah. First, well, Cuban culture is really strong. I would say, like, it's really hard to go to Cuba and you put some music um on the radio and, every, and be popular if, if no, it's really good. But for sure, United States, like, I would say like, jazz, for example, on the 20s, Cuban came to US and put the Afro-Cuban, Afro-Cuban drums inside of the jazz and created the Latin, Latin jazz. You know what I mean? Like, for sure, it's all the time being influenced, I think, in both sides. So then that, that came back. Yeah, for sure, too. for sure. That, they, because the Latin jazz born here, and now you go to Cuba and you will see a lot of Cuban bands playing jazz, like with the really high level. I think it's, culture is really hard to stop, and good music, doesn't matter where it comes from, will be in and out and traveling in both directions. All Thank the time. you so much. Thank you. I, I want to ask a real quick question. Yeah. I'm sorry, Gary. To, it takes so much time here, but um, in in performing outside of Cuba, outside of the United States, and um, I'm always amazed at the reaction of audiences to Cuban music, Cuban dancing, and so on. Um, in Switzerland, in Japan, Sweden, <laughs> etc. Et and uh, I, given your history of performing, can you tell us? Uh, when might have been for you one of your favorite performances where the reaction of the audience in a, in a sense kind of takes you uh, and, and you just can't believe the vibe, the energy that you are enjoying from the audience itself. And maybe it was here in the United States, I don't know. Yeah, like I would, I would pick my first time out of Cuba. Um, when I was 17 years old and traveling to France. 
and we dance in the small town on the Pirineo. Uh -huh. Near the Pyrenees? Pyrenees, uh -huh. yeah, thank you. Um, they never saw that before. And they came to us and touched our body, like if we are like <laughs> real. Oh, <laughs> so like, why do they do that? We don't speak a word. They touch like because we dance uh, like uh, Africa, um, in the east part of Cuba. We have a like Haiti influence, mm -hmm. like with, because I'm the last century, more than five hundred thousand Haiti ha Asian, Asian okay. came to to mm -hmm. the east part. Yeah, um, this is the more. Our culture born with this mix mm -hmm. culture, and we have like the we dance in nago and it's moving shoulder and the back, mm -hmm. but at the same time we have to move roll over the torso, and when they saw like oh but they don't have the bones, <laughs> and I said yeah well, they coming and touch and 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 that trip was like that festival was like we've been living in the house with French people mm -hmm. with French French family. And they fight for us to to be in the house. No, no, he had to be here. No, no, not here. And they're like, oh wow, okay, that sounds good. <laughs> like th this is, I think that was like impressed. I can't describe how it was like to be with 17 years old. I really far away. Of, I never expected in my life being out of Cuba because this is like the way we're growing. We don't. This is this is a dream, not the reality. You know what I mean? It's no, or no was easy at that time. And, yeah, like, I can't describe what's like, they've been like, yeah. like, like this, like, and after they've stand up, clapping for they maybe. trying to dance with you. And yeah, stuff. try to, try to talk, but we don't speak French and we they don't speak <laughs> Spanish. And that was really. But with signs, uh -huh. with with dance and movement, how you do that? Like I would say, that performance that, uh -huh. that was my amazing my experience. amazing experience. And in Cuba, like I would pick one. Um, I've been in a festival um, in in the Teatro Me Teatro America uh -huh. um, in La Habana, in La Habana. Uh -huh. and it's really hard to to get a clap. In Cuba, mm -hmm. it's, it's crazy. Like when they, the audience stand up and clap you mm -hmm. because almost you dying on the on the stage. Yeah. 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 Um, my company we, we've been dancing, and I had I this think this was when you were siete potente. No, no, no. Before, oh, before, before with yeah. Barrera. Okay. Um, after. People, all the artists, all the dancing came and, and talking and and the other for different company and school and talking and, and sharing. And one guy coming and say, hey "Man, you are a good dancer. Um, wow, I saw you will broke your body on the on the stage." <laughs> and that comment was really nice because it's again to get a compliment in kick is really hard. Yeah, it's really hard, especially if you're doing Cuban dancing. When you're doing Cuban yeah. dancing, yeah. dancing in Cuba and Cuban dance, Cuban dance is really hard to get it, to get like, yeah, I think that was two, two, two shows, two performances. Well, on that note, I think he deserves a big applause. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your. Uh, wonderful audience, and uh, uh, Royland, I'm sure, will be happy to take a question or two up here in the front if you would like to ask him a question or two. Okay.